All right, Terrified Chipmunk track. Uh, we have Ron up next with uh, Hacking Your Cybersecurity Career, and I'm going to just let him get started because it's a 20-minute talk. So take it away, Ron. Welcome, Colonel Khan, Ron Werner here. How many of you are out there looking for a job? You might even be saying, you know what? I'm pretty satisfied with what I do. We're in a very unstable age. You never know when you may be needing to jump into a new career. So that's what I'm talking about for the next 20 minutes, what you need to do to progress with your cybersecurity career. So let's move on. I do have a few 3D slides. So get out your 3D glasses. So need the proprietary who am I slide. Little spoiler alert, this might just be who my handle is. Anyway, so who am I? Please Google stalk me, figure out who I am. Don't trust anything I say, trust but verify. So that's the name I'm using for this talk. I gave a little TED talk last fall called Hackers Wanted. Please check it out. I have a link coming up here in a bit. I teach, I love educating people, helping them get to that next level, mainly because I love to learn. And this is a great opportunity for all of us to learn here through KernelCon. So I, I I'm a professor a little bit. Then I'm also a chief hacking officer, chief security evangelist for my own little company called Cyber AAA. What I want you to do is go ahead and use the chat for questions. I have it queued up over here and I've asked those to others to keep an eye on it for me. Please ask questions anytime. You can either ask them on this channel or afterwards, check out the channel for the job hunting. All right, so let's get in. What do you need to do to hack your cybersecurity career? What are we doing here? I'm very often asked, you know, I, I want to break into cybersecurity. How do I do it? Or even from those who have been doing it for a while, you know, I'm not really happy where I'm at. I think there might be something better for me. Any, so all people, all levels of the career from 18 to 58, people are talking to me about, what do I do to enhance my career? What do I, what does it take? And then we hear about the cybersecurity skills gap. You know, there's 3 trillion open cybersecurity jobs. Did I mention trust but verify? Yeah, I'll give out numbers and they may be fake. You know, 37% of all statistics are made up. Check it out. Anyway, the cybersecurity skills gap is a huge debate going on right now. Is there one? Isn't there one? Is it just because HR systems are broken? Who knows? We do know there's lots of opportunities and there's lots of good salary. So when I talk to high school kids, I say, I'm going to give you 93,000 reasons to listen to me. That's when the teacher's ears perk up and they're like, what? Yeah, 93,000 base salary for a cybersecurity analyst with about five years of experience and or a college degree. Yeah, and the high school teacher's like, oh, maybe I should leave. And I'm like, no, we need you stay teaching high school, please. I'm talking to the kids good reason to come into the career field. How do you do this? Well, take some strategic planning. If you don't have a plan, then you're just wandering around the wilderness and you don't know where you're gonna end up. So I'm gonna be giving you tips here in the next slide of how you need to be planning your career. It starts with knowing what your strengths are. What are you awesome at, okay? What are your skills? And what I want you to do is write them down, okay? But you're, as you're developing your skills, you wanna see where you are today and then plan out to the future and then plan backwards, okay? Where do I wanna be? It's like you're taking a trip. You're going out to California. How are you gonna get there? What's the roads? Cause you don't wanna fly these days. You're driving there. What highways are you gonna take? If you're not planning it, you could end up wandering all over the planet. Same thing with your career. So how do we do this? Let's see, any good questions? Nope, talking to Michael Bourne. First of all, get out your handy dandy notebook. Should see, I have my Colonel Con notebook and my Colonel Con pen. Take them out and I want you to do something for me and for you. You need to write things down. First of all, your three strengths. Three strengths, three strengths. What are the three things you are awesome at that you really love doing? When you're doing it, you don't feel time. Like right now, one of my strengths is talking to people like this, presenting. 
So strength one, presenting. When I'm doing it, I lose track of time. I'm just so passionate about it. I love it. So that's a strength for me. And it's okay. You don't need to be humble with this. This is your notes. What other strengths? Well, I'm good at troubleshooting, helping people fix their computers. So you write down your strengths. Now write down your weaknesses. All right. What do I suck at? Well, I kind of hate accounting. My dad hated accounting too. I, I can do it, but I just don't get any thrills out of it. So accounting. So if they I was going through a job interview and they said, yeah, you really need to be watching our financials. I'm like, oh, that's just not me. Okay. Now you know what you don't want to do. So write down three weaknesses and be careful. Sometimes a weakness may be a latent strength. You might go, well, I'm not a very good writer. How do you know? You might be a lot better at something. Okay. Now your three dream jobs. If you could have any job in the world, what could it be? doesn't have to be limited to cybersecurity. Same thing with your strengths and weaknesses. So let's just say you love to cook. Great cook. And you want to be a cook at an awesome restaurant. You know, cooks don't make as much as cybersecurity. You like the cybersecurity stuff. Should I put cooking down? Yes. Well, why? It has nothing to do with cyber, right? Yes, it does. To be a good cook, you're following very defined processes. You start with inputs and you want to define output. Same thing we do in cyber and IT, right? Very much attention to detail. You don't want to put in half a cup of salt when really it's supposed to be half a teaspoon. So it's okay to put down cooking for your strengths, your weakness, even your dream job. So your dream job, what do I want to be when I grow up? Write it down. And then the people you admire, like Tim Vitus. I want to be Tim when I grow up. Seriously, he rocks, right? You know, so Tim Vitus, one of the people I admire. Write down other people. Now, I wouldn't put people like Barack Obama. You want people somewhat in your sphere of influence. But don't discount like some of the people who did the bumpers, like Jason Street or Mudge. It's okay to put them down because they're really cool. And you can contact them on Twitter or LinkedIn, and they'll call, talk to you. And if you're like, hey, I'm looking for help in my career, as long as they're not slammed, often they'll help out. Okay, and what are three things you are doing today to make yourself better? What are you learning? So throughout Colonel Khan, each of the tracks, make sure you're taking notes and getting homework from it because homework begins after you graduate. So yes, my friends, I am a college professor and I do give tests and there is a test at the end. So what is the test when you're in an interview? Moving right along. And some of you will have seen this in previous talks I've given. You can check them out. I have links at the end. Take cybersecurity is all about threes, different triads. You need your tech skills, personal abilities, and functional knowledge. So your tech skills, what are you good at technically? You understand networks. You're good at Python and programming and uh, AppSec, application security, or you're good at red team or blue team. Those are your tech skills. Write those down personal abilities. These are those soft skills, like your writing skills, communications, maybe sales. Personality counts a long way. I know so many companies that don't care as much about tech skills if you have that willingness to learn, that right attitude. Attitude is everything. And then functional knowledge. So you know about healthcare, you know about finance and banking or legal or industrial control systems. Those are your functional knowledge because this will help you find that right placement. Also, another triad takes experience, education, and certifications to get a job in cybersecurity. That experience, where do you gain it? Get it from a job. I'll show you other techniques if you're just breaking into the career field. Education. Ron, are you saying all cybersecurity people need a degree? No, not at all. With education, it's learning through time. It's not just taking a one-week boot camp. You're learning across multiple classes, and you're learning how to learn, basically, in education. Education does not need to be expensive, by the way. A lot of low-cost education options. Like our local community colleges rock. Did you know we have two community colleges here in Nebraska that are academic centers of excellence? Yeah, Northeast up in Nor Norfolk and then Metro Community College. 
So look at that education, very cost effective. And then certs, you know, whether it's CISSP or SSCP, if it's you're just breaking in, get your security plus, network plus, A plus, CYSA. If you're looking to audit CISA or CISM or the OPSEC, the OSCP. So I see a question coming up. I'll check it out here in a moment. What you also want to do is track your progress. This is where having a mentor help, a coach to help keep you accountable. What are you doing to move forward with your career plan? Like any other project, what is the ROI? So let's just say you get offered a position and it's a sideways and you're like, well, it's not leading me to be that chief security officer. However, it might be that lateral you need to increase your knowledge in a particular area. So don't discount lateral moves. So track your progress, document what you're doing, be flexible, okay? Again, the career you're looking at may require you to take some tangents with it. Important to just enjoy the journey. Do things you're passionate about. And that's why I start with finding your dream job because you want to find your passion because when you're working within your passion, it doesn't feel like work. So how do you gain your experience? This is often the catch 22, right? Well, they want SIM experience and they want LAMP experience and I don't have any of that. Well, first of all, did you know Splunk gives a lot of free training? So go take it, set up your own home lab. Have your own virtual system. I was recently interviewing a gentleman and he has a lot of great GRC experience. And I asked the question, tell me, tell me about your home lab. Turns out he has like six servers and network switches from Cisco and all sorts of techie experience we had no idea about. Now we're like, wait, we could be using you for a tech role. We had no idea. So set up your own home lab and talk about it mentor, volunteer, like for Colonel Khan, and then the CTF. CTFs rock, okay? CTFs are a great way to get hands-on experience. If you're an employer, look for CTFs. Document your CTF experience as well. Get your foot in the door. This goes back to that be flexible. You might have to take a job as a PC support or help desk. Don't get yourself in a box though. If you get into that job, begin looking around and seeing what else you can do, what other knowledge, because in those jobs, you have exposure to so much of the company. Reach out to others who you like in the company and take them to lunch, have coffee with them, ask them about themselves, use social engineering, which is exactly the next step, how to connect with people. Use LinkedIn, Twitter, meetups like DEF CON 420, these conferences like Kernel Con, get on the chat. If you're not, i my Discord chat. If you're not on the chat, get on the chat, meet people. Send them a message saying, hey, dude, yeah, start up that dialogue. Can we connect on LinkedIn? So pet peeve of mine, real quick. On LinkedIn, please include a note if we don't know each other. So if we've met through Colonel Khan, just put we met at Colonel Khan. Otherwise, I very well may ignore you because I get a lot. So put that in there. The value goes both ways. How do you get your next role? Social engineering. Use that ASINT. The open source intelligence, Google stalk your next boss, okay? Use Google, use LinkedIn. Make sure your LinkedIn is up to date. LinkedIn is the modern resume. And just because you may not be looking, someone may be looking for you. So more homework, look at your LinkedIn. Do your homework, cyber stalk. So what I do, oh, and this is what I did real quick with Megan. So previous speaker, sorry, Megan, I had to pick on you. I just took a screenshot, cause say I'm interviewing with Megan and I want to start building rapport with her. What questions should I ask her? Well, I'll ask her about her furry critters because you notice she has a little crate in the back. Oh, you have a cat or a dog. Building that rapport builds likability. She plays or someone plays guitar. You can reach out and you can see she probably has kids based on what's in the background, which is exactly why I use a black screen for my background. So this way you can't really tell. One other quick tip I need to show you and a quick change. And this is why working from home. So you're interviewing from home and they say, oh yeah, you need to teach, touch, talk to our CFO. Okay, and you just want a pen testing job, but you know the CFO likes to wear a suit. So the power of the suit coat. Notice how I just transformed from a hacker to someone in business. Why well, I keep a suit coat with me at all times. I showed this to my teenage, now 21 year old son. He's like, cool. Yes, all of a sudden I look 10 times more professional in a suit coat. 
article, a post at the end on how to use OSINT to land your dream job. Quick thing on video. Okay. You might be doing a video interview. Most likely you will. Make sure you get a good camera. The lighting is a bitch. I have a professional light, but I've been having to mint dick with it. Sorry for the words. I had to mess with it all morning to get it just right. And then audio. I have a little mic, if you notice. Little mic right here. I also have a Yeti microphone. Get apps like Zoom so you can practice. Calendly. I put my calendar out there for people to see. And that way when someone's like, hey, can I schedule some time with you? I'm like, yeah, just pick some time on my Calendly. And then how to work with a camera. We don't teach this in cybersecurity classes. First of all, how to love the camera. You look straight into that little black dot in the middle. I'm learning how to pull back. Since I really can't walk around, I'm stuck sitting in a chair. Last thing, go big. So the camera, you'll hear it adds 10 pounds. It also takes away 10% of your personality. And you don't want to come across as an Eeyore. So if you notice, I use big gestures. I'm using a lot of vocal inflection because I want to bring back that passion to show you when I'm on screen. It makes all the difference in the world. Okay, I could go into a whole ter- uh, tangent on how HR systems suck. If you are hiring, just consider the people you're hiring. You can use these same techniques in reverse if you're hiring. Cyberstalk your applicants. You know, be open, inclusive, humanize. You can reach around the eight broken HR processes. Okay, now some quick resources with about two minutes left, right? Okay, so CyberSeek. Go to cyberseek.org. They have a career pathway. So if you're wondering, how do I get from here to there? So I want to start out as a cybersecurity technician and I want to be a cybersecurity manager. I'll actually show you. I'm part of the committee that's working on building this. We're working on getting better job descriptions out there. If you have feedback on this, please let me know and I'll feed it up to the committee at the National Institute of Standards Standards and Technology. More resources. So I'm going to post these on the chat here in about one minute. So you don't need to look them up. The slides will be available as soon as we figure that out. So posting right now. There you go. Ah, too fast. As I said, I gave a TED Talk, Hackers Wanted, Why the World Needs More Hackers. Check it out. Please let me know how you can help. If you want to see a slightly different version of this, there we go. I gave at the RSA conference a month ago, Hacking Your Cybersecurity Career, out there on YouTube. Oh, I'm not actually playing the video. Personality tests, I suggest you take this to know who you are. And lastly, my last slide, we're living in Groundhog Day. I'm just reliving the same day over and over again for the last 20 years. Same stuff we've been saying today. We've been saying for a long time. So please connect with me on LinkedIn. Contact me either through my Ron W at Cyber AAA account. Ooh, typo. Should be three A's, Cyber AAA. My bad. Uh, my Bellevue account, if this is more education related, connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I look forward to your questions. And I think, Jason, I'm just about out of time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You did great. Uh, there are there are at least three or four questions I saw posted in the channel, so okay. you can you can jump in there. I'm sure people will interact with you, and yes. we're going to go ahead and, and jump off this one because the next talk starts in under a minute. So thank you very much, Ron. This was fantastic. Appreciate yes. what you're doing for the industry and interacting with everybody. So thank you very much for being a part of KernelCon. My pleasure. Be safe, and I look forward to seeing you on Discord. All right. We'll talk to you later, sir.